when you say we're going to make Infinity War, it's going to be two parts, you already know what it is if you're a comic book fan. It's Thanos, it's the collection of stones, and you kind of know it's this, right? Um, so we have about three things we know, and then, it, and then it's try to make it as big as you can. Use everybody you can. So that was one of the, it was a little daunting. Before we made the deal, we went, this is going to take a long time. It's going to be really hard. We could suck at it. There's going to be a lot of eyeballs on it. But it's going to be the biggest puzzle nearly any screenwriter's ever had to face for a feature. Because I grew up reading the Avengers, where they all were on a team together. And it never occurred to me until much later in life that they did not belong on a team together. It makes it much harder on some levels because of the X-Men. It's like, look, we all have the same problem, we all have the same metaphor, and we all have the same outfits. With the Avengers, they are very deliberately different. With the first one, I said, look, I love superhero movies. This is the dream of a lifetime. I want to make a war movie. Like, they're all too clean for me. If we're going to do this, we got to put them through their paces. It's yeah. going to be insane at the end of this movie. Because I've got six of Earth's Mightiest Heroes. I've got to bust them up. So that you really think, well, they might actually not, not get through this. Um, I want it to be dirty. And, and, and the, the first template that I saw was the Dirty Dozen. And the Dirty Dozen is the, you know, the perfect. These guys don't get along. And that's how they get it done. Yeah, apparently I'm volatile. Self-obsessed, don't play well with others. That I did know. We've never written a Captain America movie. We've only ever written for Steve Rogers okay. and for Tony Stark and for all the other people inside the shells. If you're writing for the Red, White, and Blue Man, you're only going to write a patriotic story because that's all he is on the outside. But Steve is this 90-pound guy from 1943 who's been frozen in ice and had his friend killed in front of him and and is material for much more interesting stories than Captain America is. The idea was to bring together a group of remarkable people, see if they could become something more. When we start, we start while we're shooting Civil War. So Chris and I go back every afternoon and start reading comics and coming up with all the possible blue sky scenarios. And one of the missions was make it as big as you can. That's Infinity War, that's the promise of it. We had about pretty much a 60 page document of bullet pointed possibilities. You couldn't choose them all. Like, you know, this, if you do that, you can't do that. And we really did come to them and slap it on the table and said, circle the things you like. It's not even story quite yet. It's, it's... Intent. Intent and identifying the explosive materials that have been buried within the universe. Dread it. Run from it. Destiny arrives all the same. We spend an ungodly long, sort of unpleasant time outlining the thing with three by five cards and just sort of kind of hammering out what the basic beats of the movie ought to be. And what they're not. Yeah. You know, we go down the wrong road a lot. And then when we finally have the outline, we'll split that up and write the scenes individually just because they're going to suck at first time anyway, so we might as well get them done quickly. You know, so I'll write one through five, he'll write six through ten. Then we'll get together and go over it and go over it and go over it. And that's actually when it begins to resemble anything you'd be willing to show anybody. It's the biggest puzzle we've ever had to do. These guys come from legend. They're basically gods. There's only one god, man. And I'm pretty sure he doesn't dress like that. We tend to think of it as an advantage more than a disadvantage. We think of all of these characters and all of these worlds and franchises as places to draw upon. So I've always said the Marvel movies that are the best are the ones that take the biggest swings. This movie made sense when we decided it was Thanos' movie and he was the protagonist and he went through the de facto hero's journey. He's great in the comics. He is barely a villain in the comics. He's this sort of amoral, semi-psychotic philosopher. And we didn't want to lose that. The good villains are, think they're the heroes of the story. They're not usually the heroes of the story, right? Because they have to lose at the end. Mm. We were given an opportunity for a really expensive movie to have the bad guy win at the end and really kind of do a hero's journey. It, it, Gamora dies at the end of Act 2. That is sad and the worst thing that can happen, not for the Avengers. It's the worst thing that can happen to Thanos. It was that clean a hero's journey for us. What did it cost? Everything. We'll come up with story first and then, you know, try to see how, how it's going to affect the, the characters and not try to wedge the characters in prior to the story coming to them. And I mean, especially with something like Infinity War, where we knew basically the focus was going to be traveling as Thanos is going around getting stones. We realized pretty early on that it wouldn't be a case of let's check in with everybody and see them before 
before the story gets there. Because that can get tricky sometimes because you think, oh, everybody's going to want to know what Captain America's been up to. Turns out, no. Like, because, you know, you come to the movie for the story. If it's not the story, that's when you get bored. We're the Avengers. We can bust arms dealers all the live long day, but that up there, that's, that's the end game. The trick is understanding the problem. If you are writing genre, you already have a place you know you're going. They're going to sing, they're going to fight, there's going to be horror, there's going to be something that you've got to get to. There's signposts along the way. Not many screenplays just burst out of your head with an act three already. But when they have one, and you know where you're going, and we sort of did with Avengers, then it's just a question of knowing exactly what it is you have to do. You sort of have to go, okay, if I can't figure this out, then I know exactly what else I could be figuring out. Besides this one, there's nothing that can't be explained. I have always believed that you have to be directing when you're writing, and not just directing for yourself, um, but for the reader. I want every script to read the way it's going to be seen. And that doesn't mean that I'm describing every single thing. It just means that for the actors, when I hear something, I need to know that an actor is going to look at that and go, yeah, that is the next thing I would say. The idea behind Marvel is that it's not working in lockstep. You know, there is a, there's a general sense there's a plan, and that's about all they want. So communication is necessary, but you also want to forget those things exist entirely so that you are writing a freestanding thing. The lines of communication were open between us and the Russo brothers and all the other filmmakers. So we had to check in on uh, Black Panther, Thor Ragnarok, Captain Marvel, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Guardians 2. Guardians 2 to a degree. And in some cases make gentle suggestions about, particularly if movies came in between, it'd be nice if you didn't kill this person, we could use them, right? <laughs> that kind of stuff. Or you might want to know that we killed this person, <laughs> can't Don't. use them. I will not be bullied by that. Puny God. You can embrace the comedy, you can embrace the character that came before, but you always want to move them forward to some degree. Yeah. It is like driving a, a giant cruise ship. You know, you just can't turn it around or stop it. Let's not be embarrassed that we're making a comic book movie. Let's remember that this comes from a place that gave all of us a certain level of joy at a certain point. Let's not make the dark, gritty version. Let's kill every puppy we can find. It's still gonna be fun. I don't trust a guy without a dark side. Call me old fashioned. It is very hard to justify when people make a Blake and Saban against Marvel and go like, ah, they're all the same. It's like, well, it's only because you're not watching them. Marvel certainly had a number of third acts that were big and splashy and something apocalyptic is raining down from the sky. From uh, That's Winter Soldier, that's Ultron, that's Avengers, yes. So Civil War, is a very specific attempt to address that. Not only because there is collateral damage from all those third acts. Uh, William Hurt puts up on the board for everybody scenes from all the third acts. Look at all the things that you've done. There are consequences to that kind of stuff. So you don't get to play with your toys uh, willy-nilly anymore. I'm very proud of that because it is a reaction to the complaint that third acts are all the same. That said, when you make the Infinity War, it's, I can't Probably help it. Ought to it's going to be huge. <laughs> it's, it's, it has to be big. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Uh, it's been about two weeks since launching this channel and I am honestly blown away by the response. Thank you so much for watching the videos and subscribing. Um, we are closing in on 2,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane. And if you're new to the channel and you want to learn more about your favorite TV shows and films and how they were created, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and we will be making more videos shortly. I also wanted to remind everyone that if you want to take a deep dive into some of these interviews like I have, um, I'm including the link to a lot of the full interviews down in the description bar. Uh, so go crazy with that and uh, I'll see you on the other side. And as always, I'll see you guys next week as we take another look behind the curtain.